On the country's eponymous peninsula, Qatar Airways company QCSC is the national airline. In an attempt to differentiate out in a region known for premium air travel, it blends high levels of service with cheap prices. The airline updated its offering to attract more business and first-class travelers after a rocky start as a budget carrier. It spent billions of dollars on expensive in-flight entertainment systems and placed orders for new planes worth billions of dollars. Qatar Airways' own international route network has grown to connect continents, and the airline has code-share agreements with a number of other airlines throughout the world. Qatar Airways is owned half by the Qatari government and half by private investors. It is one of the world's fastest-growing airlines, carrying over 6 million passengers per year. Qatar Airways Company, in addition to the airline, runs Doha International Airport, as well as duty-free stores and culinary. So, sit back and relax. Keep watching to find out more about Qatar Airways. Welcome back to our channel, where we cover most things about luxury, lifestyle, and how people make money and spend their wealth. Hit subscribe and smash that bell button to get awesome updates on our channel. The Qatar Airways Origins in 1993, a collection of Qatari investors and corporate interests banded together to form an airline that would provide direct flights between Doha and other regional hubs. Connections to Europe or Asia were mainly conducted through Bahrain, an island north of the Qatar Peninsula at the time. In addition to ease, greater connections were hoped to aid in the diversification of the oil-dependent economy. The airline's initial funding was a meager $7 million, or 25 million Qatari Rial, all of which came from local private investors. Qatar Insurance and Al Mufta were the main stockholders, each owning 10%. Sheikh Hamad bin Ali bin Jabor Al Thani, a pilot credited with a number of daring aviation feats, was chosen to oversee the new airline. On January 20, 1994, Qatar Airways launched its first route from Doha to Sharjah and Dubai. Within a few months, the network had expanded to encompass Abu Dhabi, Amman, Kuwait, and Cairo, as well as London, England, Bombay, India, and Colombo, Sri Lanka. It was soon planning to expand its reach even more through collaborative routes with other airlines. The company's entry into the Doha-Dubai route pitted it against Emirates Airlines, which had grown into a global powerhouse since its inception in the mid-1980s. With its high standards of passenger service and low-cost operations, Emirates was stealing long-haul business from more established European and American airlines, helping to establish Dubai as a worldwide center. It would become a model as well as a competitor for the upstart from Qatar. Qatar Airways' initial goal, however, was to deliver convenient point-to-point -point services rather than luxurious facilities. There was also Gulf Air, a regional airline founded in the early 1970s by a group of regional governments, including Qatar, which owned a 25% stake. It had not yet invested in Qatar Airways. In 2002, the Qatari government pulled out of Gulf Air. Several nations that had previously prohibited additional carriers from Qatar due to bilateral agreements were now able to do so. The initial fleet consisted of two Airbus A310s, with a Boeing 737 arriving later in the summer. All were formerly rented and owned. During the carrier's first full year of operation, these planes transported 124,000 passengers. Due to strong long-haul traffic growth, the airline purchased two used Boeing 747 jumbo planes in 1995, as well as two Lockheed TriStars to charter and lease out. Second-hand airplanes were picked for the startup, according to Hamad, since they required far less cash and reduced the possibility of costly technical issues. When Qatar Airways carried 124,000 passengers in its first year, it broke even. It also had a modest but important shipping operation. The airline was flying 448,000 passengers per year by 1996. However, there was a paucity of lucrative business and first-class traffic. 1997 Recapitalization and Relaunch Qatar Airways was recapitalized and relaunched as a premium airline in 1997 after a few years as a budget carrier in order to attract profitable business and first-class passengers. Akbar Al Baker, the new CEO, came from the country's civil aviation department. He quickly reduced the number of routes by a third while improving service levels to match those of other airlines in the region. The airline lavished in-flight entertainment systems and seduced business class passengers with features like lie-flat seats. 
After its relaunch, Qatar Airways resumed operating only Airbus aircraft, albeit its four Boeing 727s were utilized for a while after being restored. The large Boeing 747s were released out and smaller A300s were replaced, allowing for more regular flights to London. The redesigned interiors provided additional space and improved in-flight entertainment. The food quality on board was also upgraded. Qatar Airways was handling 1.5 million passengers each year by 2001. It marketed itself as the world's fastest growing airline despite its small size by global standards. By the end of 2001, the fleet had grown to a dozen aircraft, but with traffic growing at a rate of 35% per year, more capacity was required for Qatar Airways to continue to expand. Following the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks on the United States, the aviation industry experienced a slowdown that affected airlines all over the world. It remained, nevertheless, committed to growth. In 2002, the number of passengers increased by half to $2.5 million. It had 38 destinations on its route network, including 11 on the Indian subcontinent. The fleet consisted of 21 Airbus aircraft. Qatar Airways placed a $5 billion deal with Airbus in June 2003, indicating a long-term commitment to the airline. Despite challenges such as the Iraq War, the Persian Gulf has remained a major crossroads for global trade between Europe and Australasia. New entrants such as Etihad Airways of Abu Dhabi were enticed into the market. By the conclusion of the fiscal year, revenues had risen to $1.5 billion. Although the corporation was losing money, its subsidiaries, such as the duty-free shops, were lucrative. After adding service to a handful of U.S. locations via a codeshare agreement with Lufthansa in May 2006, the company prepared to run its own flights to North America. By the end of 2006, Qatar Airways had four dozen planes flying between 70 cities. Business Perspectives Qatar Airways is the Qatari government's national airline. Qatar Airways is one of the world's fastest expanding airlines with one of the world's youngest fleets. The airline had planned to buy 20 Boeing 777s for its long-haul fleet for $4.6 billion a year ago, but that purchase was postponed, as was an even larger deal for five dozen Airbus A350s worth $10 billion. Qatar Airways was a significant client for Airbus as it was the first customer for a version of the A350 as well as the 550-seat A380 Super Jumbo, which is scheduled to be delivered in 2009. On the congested Doha-London route, it planned to utilize two of the massive planes. According to the Seattle Post Intelligencer, the airline also purchased 30 Boeing 787 Dreamliners in 2007. For the future, facilities and fuel. As it competed with its neighbors for a larger share of transcontinental traffic, Qatar began building a new airport. In 2007, the new airport opened a $120 million highly automated catering facility. The first phase, estimated to cost $2.5 billion, was set to open two years later, but the rest projected to be completed by 2015. Qatar Airways planned to be the world's first airline to use natural gas-derived diesel fuel. Qatar's liquefied natural gas business was thriving, providing citizens with some of the world's highest per capita salaries and driving the economy. It was also assisting the state's own airline in reaching new heights. By 2015, the airline is projected to have 110 planes in its fleet. Flying throughout the pandemic Despite the decline in 2020 and beyond, Qatar Airways has remained one of the most active airlines. In July 2020, Simple Flying investigated this, noting that it was operating its whole fleet of 30 787s and 49 A350s at the time. Simple Flying discussed this with Qatar Airways Senior Vice President, Western Region, Eric O'Don. Repatriation was a big part of it, but the airline stayed flexible with routes and fleet to keep flying. Only the A380 and A330 were grounded fully. It has since confirmed that five of its 10 A380s will be retired from service. This isn't simply because of the delay. The airline is also concerned with the Super Jumbo's emissions when compared to the A350. This is, of course, not surprising. While Emirates plans to bring its whole fleet back into service in 2021, many other airlines are unsure why they need the A380 when they have other options. CEO Al Baker emphasized how the company's diversified and young fleet had helped them get through this difficult period, saying, 
Thanks to our strategic and diversified investment in our fleet, the viability of our operations has not been dependent on any specific aircraft type. This has enabled us to be one of the few global airlines to never stop operating during this crisis, carrying over 2 million passengers and, in the process, becoming the largest international airline in the world. Our fleet mix has enabled us to continue operating routes throughout this crisis, ensuring we do not leave passengers stranded. What are your thoughts about this? Comment down! Thanks for watching!